Hello everyone. In this part of the tutorial, I will show you guys how you can change a sword and drop the sword. Like so. So let's get right into it. The process is not hard at all, but we need to create a drop sword function within our third person character. So let's head into that blueprint. Within the third person blueprint, I will make a new function. So from the functions tab, let's press on the plus sign. And let's name this as drop sword. Alright, in this function, we are going to destroy the sword that we have attached to our player. So let's grab our pickup weapon variable right here, drag that into it, and do a get. And then from the get, let's um, drag out from the node here and then search for destroy actor. Destroy actor right here. And then let's just link the executable to that destroy actor. Next, we will spawn the same sword into the world so that it can be dropped. So let's right click and then search for spawn actor. Spawn actor from class over here. And I link that up to the spawn actor. So the class would be the pickup weapon. What we can do is to drag from this pickup weapon here and then just link that up to the class over here. And then it'll do a get class node over here. For the spawn transform, we'll get the actor transform. So from here, let's drag that out and do a get actor transform. All right, and the collision can be default. That's all right. And for the instigator and the owner, we'll use a reference to self. So right click and search for self. And then link those two up as well, like that. And now we have a part of our drop store function. To test if the function is working properly, we first need to go back to the event graph because we haven't implemented it in the event graph yet. And right now we have a logic for picking up sword, but we don't have a logic to drop the sword and change the sword. So if we have multiple swords in a level and try to pick them up, all of them will be attached to the player, which is not what we want. So we will need a logic to check if there is already a sword attached to the player. We could use a Boolean variable and use a branch to check if the sword is picked up or not, but we can also achieve this by using the isValid node. So I'm going to delete this Boolean for now. And then I'm going to right click and then search for is valid. Right here, the question mark if it's valid. With the is valid node, it will simply help check whether or not the variable is there. So in our case, we will need to check if the pickup weapon is available. So let's drag out the pickup weapon and do a get and then put that into the input object right here. And I will link this up behind the branch over here behind the true here and put that in the and put the true into the is valid node. So if the pickup open is not valid, which means that there's nothing attached to the player yet, then we will simply run the code that we made in the previous episode, which is all these code over here. And I'm gonna move these out a bit further down here. And then we can link this if it's not valid into the interact open right here. If it is valid, meaning that there is a sword on the player, attached to the player, right? So we will use our function drop sword right here. Let's drag that in. And then link that up to the is valid. And then from the is valid, since the sword is dropped, we'll just go back into the interactive weapon right here. So what this will do, it will drop the sword and then attach this, um, the new um, sword that is um, interacted with the player. So we can test this out. And to test this out, first I'm actually going to do a duplicate of this um, the sword um, blueprint. So I'm going to duplicate this so I can make another sword. And um, if I open this up and then go to the viewport, I'm going to change the skeletal mesh of the sword to another sword so it's I could um, see exactly what is happening better. So let's go for the Hero Sword 10 and just compile and save. And actually, it won't update at first, but if I close it and then open it up again, it will be this sword. So let's use this sword to test out um, the different switching between two different swords. All right, so I'm going to put this into the level like so. 
and then test the code out. All right, so as you can see, uh, the sword is changed, it's dropped and picked up like so. So this is how um, it's actually a really simple function that we can make just simply changing the sword. What do you want the sword to have physics when you drop the sword? How do we do that? So if we click on the blueprint of our sword for now, and then we go to the space skeleton mesh, we're going to see that in the physics tab, we'll see the simulate physics is gray, actually grayed out right now. That's because with the infinite blade weapons, the swords are missing a physics asset. So we have to add that in. So let's go into our um, infinite blade weapons here and go to weapons and find the blade that we're using. So it's in blade, swords, and then the one I'm using is the sword 11 right now and the sword 10. I'm just going to go to the 11 for now. You can see there's a skeleton mesh and there's a skeleton, but there's no physics asset. We're missing a physics asset for it to actually simulate physics. So we can create that by right clicking onto our sword and then go to create. And then with a the physics asset right here, we can go to create and sign. And then with the perimeter type, uh, you can you choose a perimeter type that suits your need. I'm going to use a single convex hull for now because it will just uh, simply try to create a physics asset based on the shape of our sword. So we use that and then the rest I'm going to leave as default and create asset. And you can see that with a single convex hull, it will try to replicate the shape of the sword. And this is just, uh, for example, I don't think you should probably, I don't think you should use this. You should probably use something more, um, a complex one. All right, so let's save and close this off. And now in the physics tab, we can see that the simulate physics is not grayed out anymore, and we can have check that. If we run this now, you can see that the sword is still not simulating. And that's because we haven't changed the colors and presets yet. So if we pause it, you can see that um, the there's an error where it says the collision enable is incompatible. So from our base skeleton of our blueprint, if we scroll down to our collision presets, we can see that it's still in no collision. And if we try to change this into something like a physical actor, let's say, uh, you'll see that it won't let you change. So in order to change this, you have to go into our blueprint. So let's head over to our base weapon blueprint. All right, within the base weapon blueprint, I'm just going to click on the base skeletal mesh here. Scroll down to the collisions. And then the collision presets over here, I'm going to change from no collision into custom. So let's make it as custom. For the collision enable, I'm going to change this into collision enabled. And then for the object tag, I'm going to change this as the physics body. And note that I'm not changing it into the weapon object type that we made because um, we already have that as on our box collision. We have the weapon type. I mean, we have the object type as the weapon. And we only want to have the box collision as our detection for our spear trace. So that's why we wouldn't want the skeletal mesh to be uh, object type of weapon as well. So I'm just going to leave it as physics body because since it's going to be physics. For the collision response, since we won't need the visibility or the camera to interact with the source, so we can leave that as ignore. And then I'm also going to make the pawn ignore as well, since we won't want the players to be clicking the sword around, unless you really want to. So if I go to block and then compile and then try to test this out, let me save this first. It will become a problem of itself. So like that. So I wouldn't recommend doing that, to be honest. So I'm going to leave that as ignore for the pawn. And you probably won't need the vehicle or destructible as well, so I'll leave that as the ignore. And that will be it for our collisions for our sword. I'll save. All right, so now if we test this out, you can see that the sword's dropped. And then my arm, the character can't interact with the sword, but you can pick it up. And we change into another sword. You can see that the simulation is off again, and that's because our in our blueprint, our base weapon, uh, the simulation for physics is off at all times. So we, when you spawn a new sword, the simulation will be off. And the reason why this is grayed out over here is because I don't want mesh, it's got a mesh asset here. And we could do that by going to our weapon instead, our sword instead. And then if we go to the skeleton, base skeleton here, and then go to the physics. You can see that the simulate physics can be clicked. And I wouldn't recommend clicking over here because um, I'll show you guys why. So if I have this clicked and compile save and then test out the game, 
if I pick it up, it will still drop on the ground because uh, the simulate state, the simulate physics is still on when you spawn the sword. So as soon as you pick up the sword, it will drop onto the ground and not attached to your character. So if I was to change the sword, the same sword will still drop on the ground. And if I try to pick up the sword with physics again, it will still drop on the ground. So that's the issue. So instead of using a simulate physics over here, we can do this with our blueprint interface. All right, so let's go into our interface folder and then go to our BPI interactions. And then from here, I'm going to add in another function. And I'm just going to call this as drop weapon. And for this interface, we don't need to put any inputs for this interface. So let's just compile and save. And now we can close that. And the next step is to trigger the drop sword function within our third person player blueprint. So let's go into our third person player blueprint. And then, and then within our drop sword function over here, at the end of the spawn actor, I'm going to call the drop weapon interface function behind the spawn actor. So let's right click and then search for the drop weapon over here. And then I'll just have this linked up to the drop weapon and then have the return value into the target like so. Now we need to have we need to go back into our weapon, base weapon. So let's go to our weapons folder and then go to our base weapon here. And then from here, since we have our interfaces here, we'll just make the, we can simply implement the event for our drop weapon, like so. And then from this drop weapon, all we need to do is to trigger the simulate physics for our base skeleton mesh. So let's drag out the base skeleton mesh. And then from here, drag out from the node over here and then do a set simile physics like so over here and I link the execution up to the set simile physics and then make the simulate as true so check check the simulate and then compile and save and then with that it should be when you when the event grab goes through the drop sword it should um, go to this drop weapon blueprint interface to trigger it and then from here it will trigger the event from this base weapon sword and then simulate the physics for the weapon. So if I were to test this out, I'll grab the sword for now. This one this is the one that will simulate the physics and then press that. Now you'll see that the sword will actually drop. So if I do this for that, because uh, this one for, for this sword I haven't done the physics asset for that yet so it wouldn't drop so if I change back to the one that I have in, made this physics asset and it will drop like so. So that's how you would enable the physics for the sword to drop when you pick up another sword. And if I were to add the physics asset for this um, sword 10 as well like so. Now if I play it should also drop the sword as well. So now you see that this, both of the sword will drop when I pick it up and then change exchange the sword. And one more thing, if you want to have this sword to drop in the beginning when you start level, all you need to do is to go into your blueprint and your level and then go to the space skeletal mesh and then click on have the simile physics be on. And then same for this one, I'll just go to the skeleton, base skeletal and then have the simile physics be checked on. And then with that, the swords will fall to the ground when you start the level. And that's it for this part of the tutorial. I hope you guys learned something new. And for the next part of the tutorial, I'll go over how you can retarget the animations of mixed ammo animations into the animation that we need to use for our weapon equipment system. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day. And as always, never stop learning.